successful investors don't get married to their stocks. They only date them for as long as they are profitable. You know, with that thought, uh, welcome to our Zoom web series hosted by One Tree Hill and PMS Cart on the Juggernauts, conversations with uncommon and curious fund managers. Hi everyone, my name is Jai and I have with me today Amit Jeswani from Stallion Asset. You know, Amit comes with close to 15 years of experience across the broad capital markets. You know, and he's one of the few people who have quickly uh, gathered a cult amongst his followers. You know, welcome Amit to the Juggernauts. Thank you, thank you, Jay. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Perfect. You know, you know, one of the things that we like to dive into uh, immediately, you know, just to get our adrenaline flowing, some creative juices is what we call our our machine gun 15. Uh, you know, it's a quick fire round of questions that will probably put you in a place, you know, make you pause for a couple of seconds before answering, but you will have as much fun as we do. Done, done, done. Let's get yeah? started. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so first question, is the NBFC problem as difficult as it looks? A lot of them will start hitting new highs. Uh, one of my largest position, my largest position is already at new highs. And it's an NBF. Okay, super. Uh, will the government be able to get Vijay Malia and Neera Modi back? No. <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, what is driving the market uh, sort of, you know, upwards, seemingly ignoring uh, the unknown state on the sort of, you know, the ground? Are we seeing buying panic or is generally uh, hopefulness returning and fundamentals will catch up? Never, ever, ever in your life fight the Fed. Ever. Ever. So sure. if you have one guy printing the money, make money. Don't worry about the consequences. When they come, we'll think about it. Okay, super. Well, how much of that of that Fed money do you think flows into India if I could ask a percentage? See, if you think about it, FIs are not buying till now. If you see the net figure, FIs are not buying till now. Uh, but the, if you see, there's a very strong correlation between the Indian markets and the emerging markets. And that's why uh, uh, the Indian markets are also moving higher. But if you see all good quality paper is getting absorbed. Just think about it. 25,000 crores of HUL got absorbed in no time. 55,000 crores of Reliance Rights got absorbed uh, in no time. If you think uh, Bharati came up with the 15,000 crore, 5P. And all this has happened in the three month span. Just look at how papers are uh, getting absorbed. Like even yesterday when ICICI sold 4% stake of ICICI Lombard, uh, it got absorbed in seconds. Uh, so the liquidity is very strong for good quality companies. We've gone from uh, recession to depression to euphoria, everything in 90 days. Okay. So, yeah. okay. But the primary driver is liquidity, according to you. Of course, of course. So that that is mother market. One more important thing. Something like gold. Gold never corrected. in Even when the, uh, if you see gold price patterns, what gold making, uh, when the NASDAQ went from 6,800 to 10,000, Gold stayed there, and when S and P went from uh, 2200 to 3200, gold has stayed there. So once something bad happens, gold will start its bull run. But gold and Nasdaq, I believe, will lead the next bull market, and okay. that's that's where the large liquidity drive will come. Sure, and sort of you know, staying on Nasdaq and big tech of sorts. You know, uh, will India ever catch up? I would not consider an Infosys or a TCS to be a big tech company anymore. Right? Uh, will India start to produce these companies? So in India, you will have big fin, uh, less spoken about. But if you see, India's total credit size is 100 lakh crores. Uh, India's GDP today is uh, 200 lakh crores. Assuming in 10 years, India goes from 200 lakh crores to 400 lakh crores. I can guarantee you, Jeff, that the the lending the lending basket will go from 100 lakh crores to 300 lakh crores. Because no. it's theoretically impossible to, to go to a 400, uh, 400 lakh crore GDP without your lenders going from 100 lakh crores to 300 uh -huh. lakh crores. Right. Today, your HDFC has 10 and a half lakh crores. ICICI has 6 and a half lakh crores. Axis is uh, 5 and a half lakh crores. And Kotak is 22 and a half lakh crores. Combined, this is 25 lakh crores. Bajaj Finance is 1 and a half lakh crores. So I'm just adding the good quality company, yeah. not a recommendation. Uh, uh, this is 26 lakh crores. Now you have to see from a journey of 26 lakh crores to 100 lakh crores, 300 lakh crores, which are the guys who will nail it for you. And as long as uh, they can go through bad cycles, uh, manage it well, this 
I'm telling you, this sector will is, will be a large wealth creator. So financials will do well. So Amit, on on credit and cycles. Uh, in the shorter term, when you talked about, uh, I know, I know you're quite passionate about credit. In the shorter term, do you see credit expansion or credit contraction? See, the other thing is, you need growth to make money. Uh, growth will come in credit. Consumer credit will lead it. In the last six years in China, consumer credit has grown at six x, like six times right. in six years. Uh, it will happen in India as well, and consumer credit as a pie is too small in India. So let's say your credit card market is 1.2 lakh crores, 1.3 lakh crores. That's the total. That's 20 billion dollars. Look at profits of let's say SBI card. That is 150 billion dollars. Ye a million dollars. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a very chota hai. Bohut, bohut dur jana hai. So sure. uh, uh, sure. consumer credit. Uh, I do not like corporate credit. No one in India has ever made money in wholesale credit. No one ever in India will make money in wholesale credit. Okay, fair enough. So shorter term there is pain, but longer term. Uh, financials might but be yeah, everyone knows about the pain now. So everyone, you you start the TV and they'll say, oh no, you're buying financials. You're probably the most stupid guy on the earth. Well, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, super. Uh, you know, uh, Amit, one thing that uh, probably people don't uh, know about you, maybe on the street, maybe even Bezal and your team, what do they not know about you? Well, <laughs> they don't know. Uh, they know a lot about me. I don't know. Uh, there's absolutely nothing interesting Jay, about me. I'm just thinking. <laughs> but they're family to me. Like my team is my family. Sure. And uh, uh, I, I be more time here than at home. So typically on a normal day, I'm here for 14, 16 hours. And I'm home for like eight hours. So <laughs> they know everything about me. And it's been years everyone's working together. So Super. Tough, Super. tough question. Sorry. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. That's hopefully uh, something interesting, right? Uh, which balance sheet do you think is the more stretched? The government, the corporate, or the individual? Oh, it's, it's the government's balance sheet, for sure. The government, but government can print money. They don't have to worry yeah. so much. Uh, okay. The corporate, unfortunately, cannot. If you see the individual credit, it's, it's a very low level. It's not moved higher in the last three, four, five years. Uh, this is very small, Jay. The, the amount of credit we are looking at right now is very low level of credit. No economy can go grow without credit. If you see the last six years, our credit growth, the industry credit growth, growth has been 6%. No economy in this world can grow at with 6% credit growth. You have to grow your credit at 15-20% industry-wise, like the entire industry, for the economy to grow. So, uh, I... Government balance sheet is stressed, of course. Now you'll be looking at more than 10% fiscal deficit this year. Uh, we were at 4.5% last year. So I'll just give you a small mathematics about it. We were at 4.5 lakh crores. Uh, if you say that uh, uh, your corporate tax will fall 20% this year, it adds about 1.5% uh, to the fiscal deficit. Look at railways. Example, I'm just giving you an example of railways. Sure. Uh, railways uh, total revenue is uh, 20, uh, 2 lakh crores. Their monthly expenditure is somewhere around 16, 17,000 crores. Railways for last four months has made zero revenue. So uh, that's a 60,000 crore loss that you have made on railways alone. It, of course, it's not part of government's balance sheet. Uh, right. But in, there'll be a fall in divestment target. One and a half lakh crores is your divestment target. I don't see how divestments can happen. Of course, there was my friends were speaking about LIC IPO only yesterday, <laughs> uh, but it's a tough IPO. Expecting one, one and a half lakh crore from the IPO is tough to me. So government stretch. Uh, I would not buy on the government spending. So on the government spending theory, I'm not so bullish. Uh, sure. I don't believe the government's ready to risk the, the fiscal for uh, uh, right now. So right. Uh, even if you see the stimulus was not actually a stimulus. So, uh, okay. it is, uh, if your growth rate is higher than your cost of capital for next 5, 10, 15 years, there is no Excel in this world which can value the company, right? right. Uh, so as, uh, if you get that, you create massive wealth in the Indian uh, stock market. Sure. No, that's, that's absolutely true. And I think, you know, some of that uh, performance obviously has reflected on your PMS and we'll come to that for sure, Ahmed. But sort of, you know, talking on the, staying on the government, uh, is there a silver bullet left for the government? 
see if we can make in india this is this this china war is a great opportunity there are two things that i strongly believe that the government should do number one revival of real estate i can guarantee you jay no indian economy the largest purchase of any consumer happens when real estate is bought a house is bought when a house is bought cement is bought steel is bought sanitary is bought paint is bought Uh, pipes are bought. Basically, 200 connected industries do well. The government has to just focus on one real estate revival. Come Number on. two, make in India. Everything from elect electronics. See what we have done. Electronics we buy from China and all the dot com. Even Zoom, the channel that we are speaking on right now, that is US. Uh, we cannot replace technology. It's not possible right now. But we can replace the tech, the manufacturing part, and the only way you can win is if you make for India, imports come karo, and you make for India. That way, you should do a lot better. Okay, so and you know, sort of talking on this make in India, make for India, etc. Uh, where do you see the next innovation coming from India? See, chemicals lost an opportunity. If you see the total disruption of the pollution trade in in was about thirty five billion dollars. If you look at all chemical companies combined, hmm. they have done a capex of one billion dollar in last five years. Sure, you could have taken away China's. China was in crisis, right? Uh, chemical prices were through the roof. Uh, not many companies were able to scale up in this opportunity. Very one missed very large opportunity in this thing. Uh, okay. A new make in India. We can make electronics. That's our largest import. Of course, we cannot stop oil. But uh, electronics is the largest import. If you think about it, we've already done that in cell phones. Uh, our AC market, 100% of our compressors in India are imported from China. Not one company in India makes compressors. Your Dixon and Amber are just assembly lines. They are nothing. Who <laughs> plastic ka jo upper ka aata hai na? Your AC ka. They make that. And 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 if you see, look at, yeah. so you're not. Building technology, we're not getting and IP is not a problem. You can get IP from Japan, you can get IP from a lot of places, but you have to manufacture in India, uh, and then that's how it should be theoretically. Uh, sure. uh, you know, talking of you know uh, of mistakes that people make uh, and things that people get wrong. Uh, you know, what is that one thing sort of in your experience that uh, investors continue to get wrong or you know have a misconception about markets? I have not met a trader. I probably I'm a CMT, so sure. I meet so many traders, uh, and uh, I've not met a trader who's made 30, 40, 50 crores in my life. I have really I've not even met a trader who's made 15 crores in his life. And an so, investor? I know at least 100 investors who made 100, 200, 300 crores, and all of these started at one crore, 50 lakh, all of that level. So. Uh, I know at least 100 investors who've made more than 100 crores. So if you can compound your capital at anywhere between 18, and they are not rock stars, believe me. Uh, uh, if you can compound your capital at anywhere between 18 to 20 percent, 25 percent, but for a long period of time, lamba, uh, you should do well. Even today, a lot of people will start at one crore, and at 20, 35, 20, 40, these guys will be at 100 crores. I don't have a doubt that you will make money in the Indian market. Super. Uh, and you need two, three bull markets. The the lucky part were the people who were there from 1990 to 2010. They are the ones who made 10 lakhs ka, 100 crores, 200 crores, 300 crores because they got two, three bull markets together. They got <laughs> 1989 to 1992, Harshan Mehta bull market. Then they got a technology bull market. And that's why even Ramdev Agarwal made money. If you think about it, look at Ramdev Agarwal's also journey. I'm a big fan of him. But when I spoke, spoke to him, he was also saying the same thing. He made all his money in bull market. In bear market, he corrected. Every bear market, this guy corrected. But he bounced back. So you just have to be there in the game for 10, 20 years. You will end up being very, very, very rich. But do not do this speculation of intraday and uh, uh, leverage. Never lose uh, a lot of capital. Uh, so, you know, we're done with the machine gun 15, Amit. I'm glad to announce that you won and uh, hands-on uh, one with a bite with a wide margin <laughs> and your hamper should sort of you know reach you as soon as uh, the lockdown in Bombay sort of opens up more uh, but sort of you know on the lockdown and the unlock as we call it now you know where do you think what are you seeing on the ground uh, in especially in some you know st in, in cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai uh, are you seeing people opening up? 
so she has been slow for sure but that everyone knows so the markets are looking six months in the uh, future uh, i have started coming to the office on the uh, we started our office of course at 10 percent uh, following government rules uh, and we are essential essential services uh, on the 23rd of march on the uh, 23rd of may on the day of east uh, on that day we were i used to take 12 minutes to come from home to office uh, next week it took 15 then 18 Today, it took me 22 minutes uh, to reach uh -huh. from office to home. At peak, uh, when everything was normal in Bombay, I used to take 35 minutes to reach uh, office. So broadly, I'm still 13 minutes away for normal, but this right. is a good indicator for me about the right. traffic indicator. That's the first indicator. But my understanding is uh, things will bounce back a lot faster than what you mean or anyone can imagine. I've seen sure. demonetization, Everyone thought that things will not bounce back. It will take a lot of time. Well, we saw the largest bull market right after demonetization, right? If you ask anyone during demonetization, Kya hoga, bala, yaar, ab sab khatam, SME khatam, uh, all this khatam business, uh, black, white khatam. Uh, but if you had the largest bull market and you take 2017 out of any portfolio manager's return, you will see that last 10 years, if you didn't play 2017, uh, you will, you, uh, you couldn't have made money, right? You no. you would have gone below your cost of capital. One thing I can tell you, it is very difficult or next to impossible to time the market. You And even in 1919, the, the Spanish flu time, Spanish flu happened in 1919, which was also the start of the largest bull market in America, which ended in 1929 with the Great Depression, right? No. Uh, do you think, Jay, uh, because Spanish flu was just like Corona, broadly, right? Sure. Do you think people in 1919 would tell you that they are in cusp, cusp of the largest bull market Absolutely. for the next? Sure. It is not possible. So uh, we've not seen a decent bull market. Nifty was at 6,300 in 2008. Uh, we've not seen a decent bull market in the last uh, 12 years, I would say. Uh, I do think that every indicator is at the bottom. And, you know, people might think that hey, kya bol hai? everything is bad, everything. But I am more bullish than bearish. Okay. And I'm not a guy who's, who's always bullish. So I'm not someone who's very optimistic all the time. Uh, but today, looking at a lot of factors, I think, is kharab kya? Like, what worse than a pandemic? Okay, super. That, that's good to know. And, you know, it's great to see uh, the optimism sort of you know, returning back to a lot of fund managers and saying that, look, you know, if you're playing for a longer game, uh, this might not be the best time in terms of timing the bottom, but it's a, it's a good time to uh, start building up for sure. And sort of, you know, now, Amit, coming to your uh, PMS, right, that you run at Stallion. Uh, I believe, you know, you guys in the last year have had an outperformance of uh, upwards of 20%, I think close to 23%, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You know, what has been your sort of, uh, and why sure, you know, everyone would debate one year is sort of, you know, not the right mechanism. Uh, to judge a particular product, but I'd still like to understand, you know, what has been your edge uh, to give such a significant outperformance over your peers? So our portfolio is invested in four key sectors, financial, consumer, pharma, and technology. These are the only four. We don't do commodities. We don't do aviation. We don't do all that. No, not at all. Only four sectors. Our consumer and our pharma portion is defensive in nature, right? And our financial and technology are the high growth places. In a bull market, market chase is growth. And our financial and technology portion of the basket outperform the market. Sure. Whereas, uh, even in, let's say, in a bad time, like this year, we are up on our pharma and consumer basket. Okay. We never lost money. So if you see my performance year to day, till today, today morning, from 1st January to today morning, we, uh, we are down 3.5% this year against okay. probably 15, 17% for the index, whatever that is. So we have an alpha of 12% this year as well. So what happened? We did take a knock on our financial basket. Uh, we did take, but our consumer stocks, pharma stocks, and technology stocks protected us. Got it. Right? Reliance, which is one of our technology bets, is on lifetime highs, right? Okay. So the way our uh, portfolio, uh, even in financial, let's take an example. I'm just giving you an example. This is not a recommendation at all. We have Mudus Finance, right? 
Mudut Finance, we doubled our weight because we, we saw gold prices going higher. And so we were cutting down beta and increasing our weight in a secured lending. But we were there in financial. Right. So, uh, uh, we, we see, uh, so the reason for outperformance is, first of all, we have a strategic thinking that we four sectors. And yet we do not go out of these four sectors. One is half high beta, one is low beta. Uh, the consumer and pharma is very low on beta and will help me on the, uh, when the market is down and my financials and technology will nail it when the markets are higher. So that's how we manage. We don't intend to be rock stars of the market. We want decent compounding, low volatility. Our volatility last year was also very low. This year also it's low. Our portfolio beta typically is 0.65. So when you are, we are bullish, it's 0.80. When we are not so bullish, it's 0 0.40, 0 0.30, or something like that. Uh, so this is our, we don't do high beta investing. We are very right. low beta on our, like naturally as a style, we are low beta. What we are looking out for is growth. So in our consumer and pharma basket, we are happy with 15% growth. 15% we, we are very happy. But in our financials, hmm. we, will, we want 25% growth. Sure. In my technology, I want 25%. Let's up, you will not be able to, because financials and technology are very scalable. Consumer is scalable, but it takes time. It, will, it cannot grow except DMART. There is no consumer company, in my opinion, which can grow at 20, 25% for next uh, many years, right? Uh, so you want to be there in growth rate, but growth with ROIC. So which are those companies which are consistently generating cash flows sure. and can reinvest for you at high ROIC. So uh, we look at that well. Now coming to cycles, when we are bullish on the economy, uh, again, when we are bullish on the economy, we are, our weight in financials and technology is very high. When right. we are not so bullish on the economy, our weight in uh, uh, consumer and pharma goes a little higher. Uh, sure. So that's how we manage our this thing. So we take a broad call and we let the markets uh, answer that question. So, yeah. Okay, superb. So, you know, it, it, it seems to me that you all vary your weights uh, across companies, sectors, uh, probably more often uh, than the street. Would this also mean a, a higher churn ratio compared to the street? Jem, at churn, churn last year, if I'm not wrong, uh, was about 12 to 15 percent. That was in okay. 2019. Sure. So that was lesser than the average mutual fund is 40 percent. This year, our churn is about 30, 35 uh, percent. That is a little higher churn probably than the industry. The industry would be at 20 percent. Uh, but my alpha are 15 percent this year, 14 percent, whatever <laughs> that percent is. So uh, churn should not should, churn is not a criteria that is very important to me. Uh, sure. What is important that are we doing the right thing? Are we managing the risk? And what is our drawdown in a bad time? Right? right. You don't, if you are on very high on risk, see Corona, no one would have seen, right? And no one would have in his dream would have said the market will come back so fast. The Fed came in too fast, too sharp. Okay. I would not tell you that markets would, I would bet that the markets would not cross 10,000 if we spoke two and a half, two months back. Right? Uh, I could literally bet, and I'm telling you, I could literally bet the ten markets will because I, that was the time we cut down our beta. Okay, uh, right. we we have to manage risk. See, let's take an example, Jeff, and this is very important. We're not traders, but if you don't manage your risk, you will be out of the game very, very, very soon. Because in bad times, everyone will say that yeah, churn, jada, ye wo, but don't worry about all that. Sure. As long as your risk is protected, what is your risk? My portfolio beta at the bottom of the cycle was 0.30. Sure. 0.25, 0 0.30. We'd gone so down on beta that boss, we don't want to lose money. Even if the market goes down 20%, because when you're in so much uncertainty, the first thing you do is cut down your beta. First sure. thing in a down cycle that you do is cut down your beta. Even though in school you are always taught that make your beta higher in a down cycle. That is only if you know how down the down cycle will go. Of course. I, so if you, if you are seeing a recession, see all large, if you look at the last 100 years, there is no recession which gets over in 40 days, 45 days. Right? <laughs> uh, 
no recession in this world has got over in 40, 45 days. The first thing was very clear. This is a recession. Cut down your beta. And that's what we did. We first cut every beta counter in our portfolio. We like, uh, let's think over it that what we, where we should be and where we should not be. Uh, we cut out beta. We realized this is what's going to happen. And this is yeah. not, not, so you, we bought time. Uh, and, and once we understood that this is where we should be, we started uh, building job. decent size positions, right? Key, let's say technology is utility, right? Uh, something like NASDAQ. We bought aggressively NASDAQ 100, like N100, sure. Sure. which is uh, the Motilal Oswal ETF of yep. Uh, yep. this thing. We thought the business has got better uh, than what it was even before Corona. And oh, you yeah. have 0% interest rate, right? So we allocated more there uh, than what we, we also initially had it, but we increased our weight there. Uh, there were a few banks uh, and we believe credit risk there has increased. Uh, we, we got off banks. So we were in the highest quality two banks. We had only two banks in our portfolio and the highest two banks uh, that yeah. we had. Uh, we did some uh, large weight reduction and we thought that let's move into the consumer lending side. So. We believe consumer lending uh, ROEs for the next 10 years uh, should be anywhere between 25 to 30 percent. I'm not speaking about just one company. We have two consumer lenders, and okay. Mudut Finance also had uh, a 28 percent ROE. So my uh, financial basket ROE today is about uh, long-term ROE is uh, nothing less than 25 percent. Uh, all two of these financials should grow at 25-30% easily uh, for next uh, five, 10 years. So, uh, so you want to bet on growth. When you're buying on financials, you have to bet on growth. Uh, uh, in, in consumer, you want to bet on in our consumer basket. My first thinking is, will this company protect me when the market goes down? Right? Because my consumer company is very like example, something like Nestle or or something like we have in our portfolio or a bot or whatever. These guys protected me when the markets went down. And that's how we manage it in a bull market and a bear market. There are small weight increases. We don't do like 20% weight increase. Of course. 2-2% two, two we add, 2-2% two, two we decrease. So that's in a stock. So that's the only beta rotation that we do. It's like small okay. beta rotation, not very high churn or uh, very uh, this thing, but yeah. Okay. No, that's a that's a great explanation as to you know what you guys do at Amit, and I'm pretty sure there are. Uh, I'll have to just go back and and figure out what are the gems you continuously threw out uh, in this discussion. Uh, but great, so you know at least, I, at least I think there's a good understanding as to what you guys do and how you know what the edge uh, that you guys have. You know, one of the other aspects that we touch on is is tuition fees, right? Uh, in everyone's career, you know, there is a there's sort of a significant amount of tuition fees that as a fund manager, as an investor, as someone who's just started off, you give to the market, right? Uh, what has been that one tuition fee that you, that's very sort of vivid in your mind uh, that maybe you've given over the last 15 years? The la Between 2004 to 2009, I can tell you, Jay, I, I was a trader. So my father was a stockbroker. And I was also pretty young in the market. We had a lot of traders. The way, uh, so the way a old, so the ones who are old time in the markets will remember how old side trading used to be there. There right. used to be people sitting like me on the computer, and there'll be like five people behind you, right? <laughs> uh, who will be who will be punching trades? Uh, who will be using a large Falcon screen, which was for technical analysis, and yeah. like five people would use uh, one uh, Falcon uh, technical uh, analysis. Uh, so, and I used to do everything there, everything, future, option, F and O, technical. So that's where I learned my initial, uh, I have my daily trading in the market. Uh, I was pretty young, but was decent size, I would say. Like that in a typical day, I used to trade 100, 150 trades, even though I don't re recommend at all <laughs> to anyone. But on a typical day, I was trading 150 trades at least. So that's the amount of trading. But what that taught me was understanding the screen really well, right? Uh, I used to go bankrupt every time. So I went bankrupt five times. But I started learning. My largest learning was going 
and I used to start with small sums, like two lakh, five lakh, seven lakh, not large money. I was pretty young that time, but that five-year period, I still remember every mistake because you and there are mistakes. Mistakes have cousins, and they also have cousins. So you will interact with mistakes for sure in your life, and I do mistakes till now also. But my bigger learnings that ride your winners, uh, cut your losers, uh, how to manage your risk. And never ever go bankrupt again. See, you will, and no, no college can teach you what that five year taught. So those were my base learning years, where the more you trade the market, the more the sense, the the screen starts speaking to you. There will be a time in every trader's career or every investor's career where he will understand that by ye with a lot of conviction that this will happen and this will not happen. <laughs> uh, that day will come. That day, so then you can take decisions with a lot of conviction. And conviction cannot be borrowed. So uh, you keep learning. And but my largest mistakes and learnings happened in those five years where I lost all my money. Okay. Every every year I used to go bankrupt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> superb, superb. And you know, sort of, you know, uh, talking about FNO and you know, trading futures and options. You know, there is a debate which is out there that you know, should PMS managers. Or any other manager, maybe not mutual fund because that's more retail. Uh, we at least be given a significant option of trying to uh, risk manage through futures and options. Are you a proponent of that? Would you like that option to be made more clear? Uh, I think so up to two percent of AUM or up to five percent of AUM can be used even today uh, and should be used by PMS managers to hedge it if they understand risk management. Uh, yeah. they, 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 there are no rules which say that you cannot use it. Uh, there is some some things which are not so clear, but I right. strongly, strongly, strongly believe uh, at least buying of options should be allowed for uh, risk management. Whenever, uh, let's say, whenever your VIX is, let's say, at 15 or 17 percent, the cost of hedging for two, three months, let's say there's an uncertain event coming, a fund manager says that, you know what? I'm ready to lose one and a half percent. What is one and a half percent? There's a large risk event coming. I'm ready to lose one, one and a half percent. Uh, but I want to see this risk through for the next three months, right? Or the next two months. If a fund manager can take that call that, you know, things are uncertain. I want to take buy options. I think there is nothing wrong in that. And that should be allowed. But there should be a cap. It should not be speculation. Uh, uh, it, that automatically makes a beta go down. For Let's say for us, we wanted to cut down beta from 0.7 to uh, 0.7 was a beta at the peak of the cycle uh, we wanted to cut it down to 0.3 0.4 if you can buy some options automatically your beta comes down sure. and i could turn my beta from 0.3 uh, 0.7 to 0.3 by investing 0.5 or 0.6 percent of my area right no. and i could have broadly survived the entire fall so right. and my so this should be there and i'm a very strong proponent and uh, people who know it should do it Perfect, perfect. You know, just going back and this thought has uh, sort of, you know, in our conversation just come, you mentioned, you know, so in the, in the as you said, in the last maybe 12 months, uh, high quality has done well, right? Uh, now, maybe assuming sort of, you know, the risk averseness starts to come down, uh, there's a, would, you, would you agree there's a good chance that money would flow from these high quality names into maybe, uh, into maybe lower quality names? Right, and these high qualities would actually tend to underperform uh, with the market. Possible, can't rule out. See, there are. See, I'm telling you, I'm not a big fan of low quality. That's that's for public money. This is my understanding. Sure. India has a 35 stock market uh, bull. Like, uh, India has a 35 stock market bull market. In this 35 stock, is always there. I'll tell you. I'll give you an example. Uh, between 2009 to 2014, you had to be there in pharma and consumer. Uh, your son pharma, some consumer stocks, some one, two banks were there. Uh, they were the ones which were growing, like HCFC was growing at 20, 30%. Uh, th that was the basket. 2015, 14, 15, when US FDA problems started coming, uh, rupee topped out. Rupee topped out in 2013, right? That is when that, that delta of, so, so pharma companies would grow at 20% and rupee would depreciate by 10% every year. 
right? Sure. So suddenly your growth would look 30% <laughs> and your margins would go higher every year. And everyone on the street knew this game. It's not as if we alone knew the game. Everyone on the street knew this game at 10% every year. And when 2013, the depreciation of the rupee stopped, the peak earnings got hit in 2014 for the pharma cycle. Pharma topped out broadly because of rupee peaking out. Uh, prices of uh, drugs going down, like uh, generic prices going down, and right. also because of US FDA problems. The, the growth shifted from pharma, it shifted to NBFC, right? Uh, that time Bajaj Finance grew, those companies continued to grow at 20 30%. And you also had housing ancillary companies that were doing well, uh, uh, like Kajaria and all those. I, I, so it was that 30, 35, so 15 stock out of these 30, 35 stock change every three, four, five years. <laughs> and then the, the run continues. So uh, uh, the, 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 the game has changed. What's changed in, uh, for example, uh, your pharma topped out and NBFC came in that basket. Uh, a few NBFCs topped out for three, three, four years. You didn't need, you don't need any churn in your portfolio. Uh, then in 2018, when the NBFC crisis happened, some NBFCs went out like Edelweiss and all those guys went out of that uh, list and sure. newer names like some quality uh, companies got replaced uh, in that like ICS, Alamba, a lot of different names uh, got list, got in that bull run basket but the bull run is there it's always there in the 30-35 now also if you see uh, some financials will go out right? and some financials will be replaced by probably these telecom names so probably telecom or some pharma will come back so pharma and telecom will now again replace some of the uh, financials, but it will always be that 30, 35 uh, stock a bull market. You just have to know that five, sure. five, seven will go out and five, seven will, will continue in being in that uh, long, long term bull market. So that's what we also did. Uh, we also, un we wanted this crisis to understand which are the ones who are, which will lead the bull market. And right. these were the ones which will, where earnings have topped up. So wherever your earnings have broadly topped out or there's a massive delta change of earnings growth rate, that's where uh, the problems will happen. Super, super. Uh, you know, Amit, we've almost reached the end of this conversation. Uh, you know, one of the questions and probably the last question, uh, you know, a lot of people have started to manage money because of, you know, being in India, the India story, etc. cetera, uh, whether doing it with their own money, taking client money or external money. Um, and I know quite a few people who started in the last six months, right? And then obviously seen a good amount of, of blood or the majority of them have seen a good amount of uh, blood on their hands. You know, with your experience, uh, you know, what, and obviously you can't compress, you know, the five years of pain that you've seen or the 15 years of experience that you've sort of accumulated over, these, over this time. But what are the one or two things that you tell them uh, or advise them to do uh, for the next decade? I would say focus. If, if it's a new guy is there and he's joining in the financial services team, customers do everything for you. I, I can tell you, we in 2014, my office size was 135 square feet. That's how small we started. And Ajay, you've been to our office, it's a decent size uh, office. Uh, yeah. We started very small. Uh, Today, we are market leaders in uh, the research analyst uh, desk of ours. Uh, in the PMS, we are, uh, we are like new, one and a half year, but we've done decently well uh, without large uh, distribution networks. So uh, we just got, did three things that in the financial services that you need. And this is what I always tell my people. The three T's of financial service are trust. Your customers should blindly trust you. Technology and talent. If you can get the three T's right, techno trust, technology, talent, you become unstoppable in this industry. Uh, this is for someone who's not managing money, of course. That that these three words are there in every financial uh, services industry: trust, talent, technology. Focus on all these three things. Uh, create value for customers. Your customers are the ones who pay your bills. They do everything. Uh, we just focused on the customers. I. I, there is the customers are loyal to you till the time they do not find a better alternate. So uh, every customer is loyal, but he will find alternatives and go to better places. You have to be at your hundred percent of your game. Uh, sure. Yes. So I think customer focus is number one. 
Number two, technology. Uh, we couldn't have scaled here until here uh, without technology. Use a lot of technology, and it's a massive opportunity. I cannot tell you uh, the profit pools are massive in this industry, just like every industry in India. Sure. <laughs> Super. Uh, you know, Amit, we've, we've reached the end now. And, you know, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure there are at least uh, five to ten gems hidden in, in inside this conversation for uh, our audience and myself. Uh, because, you know, learning has to be continuous and it can't stop at any point in time. Uh, here's wishing you and your team at Stallion a fantastic 2020. Uh, and, you know, continue with your alpha. I think you guys are obviously doing something uh, quite different from the stream uh, and hope to have a lot more interactions uh, going forward. Thank you, Jay. Good luck to you and PM Ascot as well. Uh, I hope to see you soon. And thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a okay. pleasure being with you. Thank okay. you, Jay. Thank you. you. Thank you. All the best. Bye.